Before we start the Artist Showcase show, I wanted to share some really fun and exciting news with you. We are a play reading committee from the board of Theatre Guild, and today we're deciding on a play for March 1st to the 3rd. It's a comedy. We are excited about the writing. It was written by someone in the village. We're not going to tell you all the details yet because that's part of the fun. But you'll be hearing a lot more from us. I'm excited. We're all excited. There's a lot of noise in this group today. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's who. And yeah. that's what we like because when we're talking over each other, we know we're probably getting someplace. Yeah. Today our show is going to be digging deeper into all of these three people, Jeff Sinclair, Eveline Hoffman, and Tina Magnuson, and getting their real in-depth feelings about how it is to live and work in the theater in Laguna Woods. And we have two who've done quite a lot, and we have one who just started. So we think that it will help you to understand that it can be done regardless of your experience level and that we want you to feel comfortable trying it. Tell us Jeff, how do you feel about this whole process of being an actor? Well, <clears throat> you know, I had kind of a rough childhood and uh, you know, constantly battles going on between my parents and just an identity issue with who I was in terms of you know whether whether I would belong to that family frankly and uh, discovered later that I didn't I wasn't you know biological son of the guy I thought was my father so I think all of that probably created a desire to escape of this person who I was or I thought I was so from the earliest times in my childhood I, I could remember wanting to be an actor because I felt like you know I could be different people and I remember uh, one of my very first girlfriends in high school in fact she ended up being my wife her mom had asked me when we first started dating what do you want to do with your life and I said well I want to be a doctor I want to be a fireman I want to be a president I want to be you know a senator I want to be all these things and I said that uh, the only way I, in which I feel like I can be all of those things is to be an actor. And of course, she wasn't really thrilled with that answer. I can relate to some degree to what you've talked about, but let's talk even deeper about how you feel now that you're here in Laguna Woods and you're doing a lot of acting. What does it feel like, both on stage and off stage, and prepping for a show? Well. You know, of course, it depends on what kind of show it is. Like, for example, if it's a musical, that's always kind of fun. There's not a whole lot of depth to the characters in that. Uh, I've done a couple of dramatic roles. One with Mary Zolly on The Friend Zone. Um, of course, uh, Free Radicals that was directed by Jeannie Sanner, co-starring Benji Johnson, of course. Uh, and uh, those were some really fun roles because they get the, you get an opportunity as an actor to really dig into some of the darker sides of who you are. How did you get to that? How did you get to that? Because I, I remember the darker side. How did you get there? You know, I think you just have to think about things that hurt you throughout your life, or whether it was a relationship or whether it was, you know, something that a parent had said to you, or in my case, when I was younger, going back to that, um, my ears protruded just really profusely and and so I looked like uh, uh, was it Newman on uh, <laughs> that, uh, Alfred E. Mad, Newman uh, <laughs> Mad Magazine mm -hmm. and that gave me a huge insecurity and I was only able to get them surgically fixed if you will uh, in 1996 after I was you know 40 some odd years old so an entire life of teasing from kids kids can be so cruel an entire life of teasing from kids um you know, that, that creates pain. And so when you are playing the role of someone who is deeply disturbed, for, perhaps, like in Free Radicals, mm -hmm. a murderer in that case, uh, when you're playing someone that is confused about who they are yeah, in their role um, as that character, I think that you go back and draw upon the pain 
that you have personally experienced in your life to create that that frustration and that anger. And I think that's where I went with free radicals and uh, it played off pretty well. And even knowing you, it was really scary. <laughs> you know, it was scary, which was good. I mean, it made me afraid of you, you know, and I thought that, and I, I know the audience felt it too. Well, you should be afraid of me, Sarah. Oh, yeah. And what about when you do the happier things like the musicals? What's the other side of that? How does that happen? You know, those, those are just, I do them for fun. Uh, Again, the characters in musicals are never very deep. It's all superficial, and uh, I like doing the more dramatic stuff. I've done some dramatic stuff in Hollywood, which is really great. Um, I was able to do a the only nude film I've ever done, which was pretty interesting, um, in uh, Salt Lake City, where I actually played uh, a, the role of a, of a rapist who was... This was a documentary-type art piece... And uh, the rapist, due to his, uh, you know, his conviction and the terms of his, his release, he could not be seen on film. He certainly could not be seen nude. So they asked for a body double. And so the, for the very first time, I had an opportunity to, to get filmed nude on stage, which was very interesting and very, very uh, uh, deep as well. Okay, let's talk even a little deeper, if you don't mind. How about what this has done for your life this acting gig that you've been doing both professionally and as an amateur how does it really affect you and how do you think it affects your you and other people around you I think that based on my childhood based on the roughness of the relationship I had with my parents my siblings based on the teasing that I endured my entire adolescence um I, I developed a real insecurity about who I was as a person, who I am as a person, and being able to act, being able to, to play different roles, being able to discover that aspect of, of who I am and this aspect of who I am, developing characters, has really allowed me to, um, in this community and also in Hollywood, just get accolades for the work that I've done, and that has been a tremendous uh, influence in my ego, frankly, and Which is my fine. confidence in who <laughs> I am as a person. I walk around the village, and uh, I also am a lead singer in one of the better bands here at the village, and I walk around the village or go to the pool, and people are saying, oh my God, I really enjoyed your show, and I really enjoyed you know, your singing and all that kind of stuff, and it just really has allowed me to understand, understand that I truly am a really good person. And you know, the interesting part of that is that you're very generous with others when you're in a show. I've noticed that. And that's um, sometimes not easy because you get your own ego going to a level that, you know, you forget about the others. But you're not that way. And why do you think you are that way? I love people. I genuinely love people. My entire life, I have always looked for the good in people. And um, I don't like bullies, uh, perhaps because I was bullied and teased and all that kind of stuff. So... I always try to reach out and try to make someone feel better. In fact, that's kind of, you know, what I'm known as here. It's someone that just, whenever you're around me, you feel better about yourself, and I love that. Tell us what you would do to give advice to people who really want to be on stage and would like to be the lead, to be the star of the show. Well, you know, that's, I think that there's a little bit of that in everybody. I think everybody likes to be loved, everybody likes to be admired, everybody likes to be adored. And so I think if that's you, if that's what you have inside you, you know, it's never too late. It, it just you got to go for it. I just turned 62. I got involved in acting after I lived a married life for 15 years, raised four children, got divorced, and that's after that's when I pursued my acting career at like 55 or 6. So It's never too late. If you have that desire, even an inkling of that desire, come on out, try it. Get to the theater guild meetings. Get involved. Meet people. uh, Go out for auditions. We we need people. So um, come on out. I'll help you out. How do you feel actually inside after having this experience of living here, acting here, and interfacing with all these people? Well, I am... (laughs) I feel so much joy and so much happiness and so much love. I feel so much better about who I am as a human. 
uh, I've recently fallen in love, not only with myself, but with an amazing person as well. And I just, I, I didn't want to live very much longer about a year ago. And I, now I want to live to 150. Thank you so much. I love that all that you d shared with us, and hopefully others will be inspired. Hopefully. Thank you, Cindy. Now we're going to talk to Tina Magnuson, who played Betty Boop in Chasing Dreams, the famous comic character. Tina, tell us about how you felt doing this project and playing this character. Sandy, it was so much fun turning into someone else, just getting out of my own skin and being able to just embody a character. So I had to do some research and do a lot of mirror practicing so I could see how does that look, how does that feel. And the more you put your costume on and the more you put your makeup on, all of a sudden you are turning into the character. I was all of a sudden Betty Boop. How did you feel before that as far as being any kind of an actor? I was so shy. I had no desire, maybe that wasn't the right word, but I just couldn't see myself going out there. Being another character, I was just so shy, didn't want anyone to think of, oh, how was Tina laughing? <laughs> how is she smiling? How is she? I was very self-conscious. What changed it? Just the people around me saying, you are doing a great job. You can do it. Just encouragement. So how did it feel to get all that attention? It was very exciting to have people coming up to me saying, Betty Boop, oh, you are so cute. You look great. You look just like her when you're not sure whether you really do look like that character. And then what happened when you started to perform at the promotions and things we did and then when we were actually in the show? What happened then? It was really exciting to have people coming up to me and saying, oh, I saw you at 19, or I saw you at the dance. I've seen you. Oh, you're just great. You're doing a good job, especially after the show. And people waving, people calling out, Betty Boop, how are you? Oh, that had to be so much fun. What did that do for your, your feelings about doing this again and in the future? After I was saying, there is just no way I could do that. I can do that. That's what's exciting. Yes. How did you feel with all those accolades? I felt so proud of myself. I there felt so excited. I really felt I was 10 feet tall instead of 5 feet tall. What did you think about the future? Uh, of doing more of this great feeling that you got? The future looks bright. It looks as if there is something I would love to do. Just continue doing. It's a lot of fun. It isn't as scary as I thought it would be. Do you feel even better about yourself, not only that you're prettier, that you're more exciting, that you're more fun? Absolutely. I do. When people come up to you and say, oh, you look so beautiful and that you played that character great so I just feel so much better about myself so so you're almost like a little movie star here in Laguna Woods absolutely I am that's the way I feel and that feels how does that feel it feels great you do stand taller you do have a bigger smile you do have that contact with people when they smile at you and you give them that big smile back and just saying, they look at you, recognize you, recognition, unbelievable. You're just actually someone in the village, not just another person. Oh, that's so true. And, and it's so interesting because you, you thought you didn't want that. You thought you didn't want that. That's but, right. But I didn't think I wanted that. 
but once you do have that recognition, you can't help but want more and want it all the time. Next, we have a wonderful talk with Evelyn Hoffman. I've known Evelyn since I moved here, but I want you to know her story because I think it will not only help you emotionally, but I think it's going to help you to potentially get more involved in Theatre Guild. Evelyn, we want to know, how did this all start for you? Oh, my. Uh, well, I've always wanted, I always thought I might like to be an actress, but... You know, I was in the restaurant business, and I had four children, and I never had the time. So uh, when I retired and moved to Laguna Woods Village, at that time it was Leisure World, uh, Laguna Wood Village, after a while, I, I worked for the first three years part-time in a, a weight loss center. And uh, I did that for a long, long time. Let me go back a little bit. Um, I had lost a lot of weight at a weight loss center. And then when I lost all my weight, they begged me to come work for them. So I did. And I just loved it. I loved helping people. It was just wonderful, so rewarding. In fact, I was very surprised the first time I received a check doing this. So this is one of the passions, the reason I'm mentioning this, this was a passion that I finally found that I loved and, and didn't know how it felt so great to have a passion now when I moved here uh, the first three years I worked part-time and then I stopped working and I decided okay now it's time to have my retirement so um, what I did is I saw in the globe I saw um, one of the clubs well actually a lady named Jeannie Sanner who still lives here um, she was an actor and had a studio in Orange County at one time before she retired. And she offered a free actor's class. So I thought, God, that sounds like fun. Okay, so, so I went and that was it, guys. I was hooked. I was hooked. I, I couldn't wait to get my hands on anything. It was so freeing, so much fun. I felt so good. Um, the people around you, theater people, are so friendly and they they bend backwards to help you which I like because I was so I was kind of shy and I thought oh I'm not good enough and one of my idols um, is Cheryl uh, um, uh, what's her name Street oh, she, oh Meryl Street Meryl Street because I had read an article once how how vulnerable she is and how she used to be so scared to go out and do interviews and all that and I thought oh my god she's actually human so I anyway um, I, it, it really helped me to think, well, I can do this. So I started with a little role, and I remember once, um, and I did it at a meeting, and, and the uh, director at that time, Sheila Bialke, she was going to be doing a Broadway a production, a big one. And I came over to her and I said, do you think you could find a little tiny role for me? And I just love to be part of it. Not too much. I don't know if I could do it. And, oh, sure, I'll find something for you. Well, that was it. That was the beginning. And now I did everything I could get my hands on. There's just, so this is my second passion, I guess, is um, because it makes me very excited when I'm on stage, when I'm at rehearsals, when I leave the rehearsals, when I leave the show and I'm on my way home, I feel so elated and I feel so content and I feel part of something, part of a community. Um, it, it's, just, it's a family, it's a real family and you know that you could just call any one of them and they would be there for you in any capacity. Now, Evelyn, we want to find out where did this all come from? It must have come from something, maybe a long time ago. Uh, well, you hit the nail on the head, so to speak. Uh, when I was very young, uh, actually, I'm a child survivor of the Holocaust. I was born in Paris, France. Uh, we had to run, I mean, at night, we had to run and leave Paris, leave everything behind, our furniture, our apartment, everything. Uh, that's another story. Um, but anyway, I, I never could, after that, I never could make close friends because my parents were always telling me not to, not to get too close to anyone because we might have to move, we might have to leave, we might have to, it was always something there and I became very, very, um, I don't want to say suspicious, but on guard. Um, with other people uh, and I never wanted to get too close 
And I think a lot of that, and of course a lot of resentment built up, but anyway, moving on, uh, we had to leave for America. Uh, my parents went to Spain and stayed there for the duration of the war, which was five years. My two sisters and I, we went to the United States on a, on a boat from Portugal uh, and had a few adults taking care of 60 children. Uh, my parents couldn't get visas for themselves, only for us, because we had an uncle in Philadelphia who, um, who sponsored us. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at is this brought in a lot of feelings in me of, of uh, being angry, being scared, uh, not knowing what the future is going to bring. Well, moving right along, um, I, ha I, I was in certain foster homes in an orphanage for a while, uh, and then I want to go further up just to give you an idea of the things that I was feeling. Um, and I, all that had to do a lot with the way I became an actor, I believe. I take a lot of that when I'm acting and I'm trying to think, this is something you learn when you take a class too, to bring a lot of something that is in you compassion, which I have a lot of compassion for people because of some of the things that I went through. Um, I like to help people emotionally because I know that I needed that and I got that from a lot of different people. Um, so when, when I'm on stage, I bring a lot of that out. Um, and the thing, and I guess the best thing for me is when I do a show, and I have, first of all, the show to me is only for the audience. I do everything in my power to have them enjoy the show. Well, the accolades that we get afterwards that I get personally, uh, it sends me, it sends me in heaven. I mean, I'm just so happy and excited that they liked it. When I see the smiles and the people, I've given something to them that 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 they don't get from some anywhere else and I make them happy and this is why I do it it's a passion I love it I love the audience and I love the people that you know and it's fun to be somebody else Evelyn this is an amazing story and I know a lot of people will feel that way but obviously you project so much joy and you've done so many things do you have any idea of how many different acting things you've done in this village uh, I wish I had counted I mean my every time I do a show and I write out a bio it gets longer and longer uh, but I've been acting here uh, the past 11 years I would say 11 and a half years and I've done small things and I've done really large you know main stage plays I also but I like to go into every facet um, or a lot of facets of the stage because I help when I don't get a role or I do a small one or whatever I I offer to help in any way I can uh, assistance or whatever uh, to get to know more it, it's important to when you do that to know what it is to be an actor because you understand the actors a lot more and you can help them a lot more um, I, I did do a lot of shows I what feels so great to me is I feel very respected. That's what I was thinking. I do feel very respected. I think when people think of my acting or, or see me or something, I feel that, that they're, they're appreciative of what I've done and they really kind of, I don't want to say look up to me because that's not exactly it, but they're a little bit in awe, maybe a little bit in awe because I, I uh, and I and I'm not snobby about her or anything. I'm not a prima donna, believe me. Or always I know that for sure. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, but uh, I've done a lot. I've enjoyed it. But you have to work really hard. Uh, you know, there's a lot of li and learning your part, the character, and the lines. And but it's a joy because you see it coming to fruition. And that is just two weeks before every show starts. 
I always think, oh my God, are they going to ever get it together? And all of a sudden, just like that, it all comes together. It all comes together. I wanted to add something and ask you something because what you said is so important that I want to make sure they hear this. Mm -hmm. How important it is to try to do as many things in the theater as you can, not just the acting but all of the other aspects. Because you have done backstage, you have done prompting, you have helped people learn their lines. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so important that they understand that because they look at you and say, well, my goodness, she has so much experience. How could I ever do that? I didn't always have that experience. I remember the first show that I did, a main stage show was 12 Angry Jurors. And I had never, I had only done one or two little small meeting things, so this was a big deal and I really didn't know if I could do it, but I worked so hard because I wanted the director to respect me and I wanted to do my best. Uh, and it was, it was something I really worked at and it was, it was wonderful. It turned, in fact, Jeannie Santa was my director there and I was really, she really worked me and taught me how to get things out of me, uh, how to take what's happened to me. Like if I had a a part where I needed to cry, I just thought of something that happened when I was separated from my parents or a big argument I had with my husband or something. (laughs) And all of a sudden I just got all those feelings and sometimes, and you have to know how not to actually you know just fall apart you have to hold it back so that's that takes a little technique but it and and it may sound difficult but it's not it's not it's just all of you is is such a wonderful thing to do to be a part of of theater guild um this this group this group of women and men they're just so uh talented and they try so hard and at the meetings you know uh and nobody pushes you to do what you don't want to do. That's what's so great. So it's really, you know, you put one foot in and then two feet in and then who knows where that'll take you. Oh, let's talk about the future because mm. luckily, even though we live in a retirement village, yes. most of us are looking to the future. So what do you think about your future here? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I think this is my last stop. Uh, I mean, to me, there's no better place. You have everything you want here, or you don't have to do anything. Uh, I've gotten to know so many people, and it's just wonderful. People, uh, you can be as friendly or not, but people here are very friendly, and I, I like staying here. I intend to do more, maybe more backstage, I don't know. There are an awful lot of good actors coming into the Laguna Woods that I've seen a lot of younger people, which is great. So there's a lot of talent here. Uh, And then there's some people who, you know, you don't have to be talented, but we help you to learn how to do something. So uh, I will stay here, it is huge, and I will stay here and I will will keep working at it. And um, I mean, to me, when someone approaches me and asks my advice, oh my God, that is just so, rewarding for me it's exciting it's rewarding it makes me really happy and I appreciate it and it makes me more confident I didn't have a lot of confidence I was very young I was not treated well by foster parents and things but uh, I I this really helps build up your self-esteem it does and sometimes mine goes up through the roof but hey, there's not nothing in a bad wrong. Way. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with that. And we found that from the people who were in our last show, who were brand new, yes. and how much enthusiasm. And they're all coming up and saying, "What can we do next? We want to do more." Mm-hmm. This was so much fun, yes. and that's what the goal is. That's yeah. what the goal is. And this is when you come to meetings. This is when you find out yes. all about what's going on. And they started yes. at the meetings, and they ended up in the show. So come and join us, okay? And I know you're going to feel like I do. That's it for now, but I hope you enjoyed this show because I certainly did. I know these people and I learned a lot today because we did dig deeper. So we hope that you'll do that too, that you'll think about, gee, I saw these people and I think I can do this too. And all you need to do is come to a Theater Guild meeting. It's the third Thursday of every month at Clubhouse 7. We open the doors at 6.30. And when we open those doors, we have something to give to you. And if you want to receive it, you'll find yourself giving it back.